Hello, it's Scott Manley here. I'm back in Scotland for a couple of days, and as you can see, I've solved the ongoing efficiency problems with my head. And we have a lot of news in the last 24 hours. I mean, I literally went to bed and woke up and Everything seems to be happening in the space business. So, you know, yesterday started out kind of quiet. There was a secret uh, unannounced launch of a Soyuz 21B. That is the sort of fake Soyuz, as I like to say, because it doesn't have the four strap on boosters. Therefore, it doesn't have the Korolev cross. And as they say, a Soyuz without a Korolev cross is scarcely a Soyuz at all. Now, seriously, though, four uh, military satellites were launched from Plisetsk uh, on board one of these small Soyuz rockets. Uh, always interesting to see this launcher go because it's uh, kind of doesn't launch that often. Virgin Orbit were out testing with their Cosmic Girl and their Launcher 1 rocket. This was a dummy rocket, a mass simulator that was the right size and mass. They were flying it around and they dropped it successfully. This flight was performed by their test pilot Kelly Latimer. And uh, yeah, apparently everything went to plan. So this is great because launch, Launcher 1 is going to be an air-launched launch vehicle that will hopefully give them a you know potential for selling launch services to people that want small want small satellites launched. If you uh, wanted a small satellite launched and you are willing to pay ESA for the privilege, you would have probably used the Vega launch vehicle. This is actually an Italian developed rocket. And it's very similar, I think, to the US's Minotaur uh, launch vehicle. It's a four, three stage a solid rocket motor, uh, ro uh, solid rockets with a single upper stage that has liquid fueled by a uh, hypergolic engine. It's um, you know, dinitrogen, UDMH and dinitrogen tetroxide. But yeah, the whole thing masses about 100 ton and can put maybe 1.5 tons into a sol uh, polar sun synchronous orbit. So yesterday, it was, I think it was its 15th or 16th launch and it had performed flawlessly to this point. It was launching a Falcon Eye satellite, a an Earth observation satellite with military applications for the UAE. And two minutes into flight, the first stage completed its burn, separated, and it looks like the second stage failed to ignite. And yeah, that was rather embarrassing because, you know, we could see the telemetry of the whole rocket just arcing over and not actually accelerating at all. It was uh, kind of unfortunate to see the commentator just going by the script. I don't think the commentators are allowed to deviate too much from the script, even though we could hear in the background the call-outs like, uh, not nominal, pas nominal, or <laughs> I think is how you say it in French. Uh, so that's rather unfortunate. The Vega has been 100% successful to this point. Uh, as I said, Italian launch vehicle, and it was recently announced they're actually upgrading it to the Vega C with a, also a view to creating Vega E as a, a step up from that. This will be a heavier version. It will be able to launch something like four tons into low Earth orbit. And I believe there will be commonality between the first stage booster on the Vega and the strap-on boosters that will be used by the Ariane 6. Vega is kind of important to Ariane because, oh sorry, Ariane space, because Ariane 5 is a monster of a launch vehicle. And one of the problems they've had is simply that very few satellites require that level of mass. It's great if you're putting a heavy satellite into geostationary orbit, but for the smaller payloads, Ariane Space uses the Vega, and between the two, they're still using the Soyuz. So Vega C will actually give them a bit more, uh, op many more options to use their in-house launch vehicles rather than buying them from Russia. But that, a rocket failure of a rocket that has never failed before, that wasn't even the biggest news of the day. No, the probably the biggest news is the one that you've never heard, right? It's that Bill Gerstenmeier, uh, who I probably mispronounced his name, is out as the head of NASA's human exploration uh, group. He's been like, he's been at NASA in that role for like the last decade, working on trying to keep the various human flight options, you know, ISS, Moon, SLS, commercial crew, trying to keep all those working together in a common goal. And 
Yeah, he has been essentially demoted to another role. Uh, there's uh, some other people that have been moved around and his deputy is taking over. Uh, this really came as a big surprise, although some people had seen that, that he has been a very reliable, consistent sort of conservative, but uh, never one to overpromise and underdeliver. And that may not be consistent with what the people at the top want for the Artemis project. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's going to change things, if we're going to see some faster progress or if we're going to see the green run, the test run with the full booster get, sh you know, cancelled and replaced with an actual flight. Bill was actually one of the big proponents of the lunar uh, gateway because you know, obviously he's been in politics, he's been at NASA for 40 years and he's seen how changing plans have caused various projects to be funded and then shut down without completing. And you know, the lunar orbiter, orbiting platform gateway thing is a very good way of hedging your bet if you're going to go either, if you're anticipating that plans to go to the moon might be replaced with plans to go to Mars or vice versa. However, it does add cost to either or. So if you're aiming to get to the moon in four or five years, then cutting that out might actually make sense. But then again, they've already started, you know, they've already handed out contracts to build hardware. So I don't know where this is going. It, things will probably become clear in the coming weeks. It, it, we just got the memo, so we really don't know what else is going on there. In deep space, we have one last thing. We knew that Hayabusa 2 was going to take one more sample. If you remember earlier in the year, it shot a big hole, made a big crater in asteroid Ryugu using its shaped charge, its small carry-on impactor. Well, last night it descended to the surface and plucked some pristine material from just under the surface, or under what used to be the surface of uh, Ryugu. So we're going to have now another sample from another uh, part of the asteroid to analyze when Hayabusa 2 gets back. That p was pulled off successfully. So yeah, looking forward to, well, that's good news from those guys. So yeah, this has been a pretty crazy uh, day and there's actually more going on. Oh yeah, Virgin Galactic it is now publicly traded on the stock market. That's obviously a way to try and uh, get some public money into the brand. Um, I'm not sure what that will do to their flight schedule, their planned flight schedule. There was talk of um, you know Richard Branson flying to space on the 50th anniversary of the Apollo uh, 11 landing, which is of course like. <laughs> We less than two weeks away that anniversary and we haven't heard anything about that so I think that has fallen through at this point but uh, yeah you know if you want to invest in space it's there uh, you know not everyone's going to do that but hey so yes I am going to be back in the US in a day or so and uh, from there I, I will be making regular videos again at least until I move to my new house and then everything else gets messed up so yeah i'm scott manley fly safe and i i'm telling you that's flying me across the atlantic tomorrow please fly safe <laughs>